is Red Hat this evil predatory company in the FOSS space? Well, maybe. And if you saw this tweet from the founder of Devuin, maybe you would think that. Is this the future of System D slash Linux documentation? And as you can see from this, you can't actually read it without a Red Hat subscription. And this started to make the rounds, and I first saw this when Ariadne Connell quote tweeted it. It is honestly disappointing to see some people defend predatory actions of leading FOSS companies. Ads in Ubuntu apt, paywalling FOSS documentation, these are apparently not violations of the social contract anymore. And this right here is the article in question. As you can see, it requires you to log in, otherwise you can't really see past like the introduction. It doesn't provide anything of value until you go and log in. I absolutely hate it when things like this show up in my search feed. Just as much as, you know, Bloomberg articles and other sites that put things behind a login or a paywall. But is it such a terrible thing that Red Hat charges for this documentation? Well, no, actually not, because firstly, they don't actually charge for it. I am now logged in and have full access to read this entire bit of documentation. And I don't have a paid Red Hat subscription. You can do this completely for free. So the way you access this is through the no-cost Red Hat Enterprise Linux individual developer subscription. So anybody can sign up for this. They say you should be a developer, but anybody can say I'm a developer and just make the account and sign up. What it costs you isn't money, instead costs you a bit of your information. So it'll prompt you for things like your name, your address, your email, your phone number, basic things for signing up to a website. On this page, when you're not logged in, Red Hat does a pretty bad job at explaining that you can access this completely for free. The only reason I know about this is other people have mentioned the no-cost developer subscription. And then under section 7 it says, Access to knowledge base articles, portal discussion groups, and magazines on the Red Hat customer portal. So this right here is part of the Red Hat knowledge base. And this no-cost sign-up is basically the same thing you already had to do to gain access to the Red Hat Enterprise Linux ISOs. Anybody is allowed to access this, but you can't just go and download it, you know, without doing anything beforehand. This no-cost developer license is for the individual users. When we're talking about a corporate user, they do have a separate license that they will actually go and pay for. With all that cost stuff out of the way then, should you have to pay with your personal information to access this software documentation? Well, that depends on how you define software documentation because this isn't the systemd documentation. All of that documentation is available upstream completely for free. You can go and look at anything regarding systemd, let alone the fact that you also have man pages available on your system when you install it. For this specific problem of gathering debug logs from systemd during shutdown, there is basically an article on the free desktop website for doing the exact same thing. What this information in the Red Hat knowledge base is, is information that you can find elsewhere on the internet completely for free, without even costing things like your personal information, and then being rephrased by Red Hat employees into a way that fits the way that they want to go and write their articles, whether it's something like system D timers or anything else that is available. Should Red Hat be able to put this information behind a login, or if they feel like doing so, behind a paywall? Well, Lenart Pottering explains this pretty well. So this referring to the original tweet, no, this is just the tax you have to pay if you can't Google, or if you can't look for the upstream documentation on the website of one commercial downstream project. Look here for the upstream docs. Maybe your query reveals more about your own mindset than the state of Linux. Now, Lenart can't go two minutes without insulting people, but this first bit is entirely reasonable. Let's frame it another way. Think of all of the Git training courses and Linux training courses and programming training courses and most of the paid training courses out there on whatever platform is your favorite platform. Most of these courses contain nothing but free information. If you want to go and do so, you can go and read some programming documentation, Git documentation, some tooling documentation for various things involved in Linux and get all of the same raw information. 
but what you are paying for is the way the information is being presented. If they want to go and charge for that, I don't think that's that big of a deal. And if you want to go back even further, having all of this documentation freely available online that anybody can go and access is kind of not the way it's always been. Even so, technical write-ups and documentation have been an aspect people have paid for with FOSS for nearly its entire existence. I remember buying books for learning how to use things like Red Hat Linux, Emacs, etc, and that's a thing that continues even today. I don't necessarily agree that there was a social contract saying that it had to be free, since it never was in my experience. However, what I do agree with is this. What I'm complaining about here has nothing to do with buying books. I'm complaining about the fact that Red Hat has paywall documentation that they have SEO'd so that they rank higher in search results over the upstream documentation. I hate the fact, I mentioned this earlier, I hate the fact that when I search for something and it's been SEO'd properly by Google and it shows up in my search results or whatever search engine I'm using and I can't view it. Why is it showing up in my search results if I need to log in? Please stop doing that. I get it with news sites trying to sell articles, but if you have documentation and you need to be logged in for it or it's behind a paywall, just don't SEO it because nobody's going to sign up just to use that. But there is a reason why Red Hat is one of the few successful FOSS companies. They managed to take something that is freely available and then offer it in a way that provides value. Whether that's with the documentation, whether that's with their Linux distro. Like, you can get the Linux kernel in countless free distros, but they managed to provide Red Hat Linux in a certain way that convinces certain people to give them money to support it. There always seems to be this weird culture clash whenever money gets involved in the FOSS space. I totally get a discussion about morally monetizing something, that totally makes sense. But we've all heard free software doesn't mean free as in beer, it means free as in the four essential freedoms. Making money from FOSS is not inherently a bad thing. And I would love to live in the world where everybody who is a FOSS developer could be a volunteer and has every one of their bills being paid for, but most people just can't do that. Most people have to work a full-time job and then do FOSS stuff on the side. No amount of issues and pull requests are going to pay your rent. And of all the ways to monetize something, offering extra resources ranks pretty lowly on my predatory list. Also, it's free of cost anyway. But maybe you disagree, so let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, could you come my Patreon, subscribe to the Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Broder Optum Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.